Ohio State students are improving their health this new year. Buckeye TV reporter Kelsey Miller has the story. It was a new semester with New Year's resolutions of losing weight and getting healthy. Has this caused Ohio State's recreational facilities to become busier? I sat down with Marcy Shoemaker, who's the Associate Director of Administration here at Ohio State for the Department of Recreational Sports. What do you think the reason is for the busier recreation facilities around campus? I think it's definitely related to New Year's resolutions. I also think that there's a large social component to people being here. They're excited to be back at school. Have there been more people attending the fitness classes as well? Yes, we have seen really strong attendance. In the first week of classes, we saw about 4,555 participations in group fitness. I am here at Jesse Owen South at The Ohio State University. It is around 3 o'clock Wednesday afternoon, and we are about to get some opinions of students working out. Have you noticed that the gyms have been more packed recently due to the start of the new semester? Uh, absolutely. I think the gyms are a little more packed than they were before, especially at nighttime. Well, because it's the start of the semester, work hasn't really kicked in yet. There hasn't been many exams. People want to work out. Uh, maybe it's the new year. People want to get in new habits. And uh... Have you ever tried any of the fitness classes here at Ohio State? Yeah, I have. I went to a a circuit cycle bar class. Will the campus as active as Ohio State, will we ever see these New Year's resolutions fade away? Or will the gyms remain this busy for the rest of the semester? Only time will tell. I'm Kelsey Miller with Buckeye TV. Thanks, Kelsey. Sounds like Buckeyes are as active and motivated as ever. With spring break around the corner, I believe you're right. Ohio State defensive coordinator Greg Schiano may be leaving Columbus to become the new defensive coordinator for the New England Patriots. It is unclear whether Schiano will, will take the job. However, Bruce Feldman on Fox Sports reported that Shiano is undecided about where he will end up. And now for an inside look at Ohio State's game against Penn State last week, here is Brad Murray. The Buckeye basketball team is off to a record-setting start under new coach Chris Holtman. The Buckeyes are currently 18-4 and 9-0 in the Big Ten. I was able to catch up with some fans who sensed a new energy in the crowd. There's a lot more students flooding um, the actual student section, and there's a lot more energy. I don't. I, out of the five years I've been going to the basketball games, the uh, nut house has not been as loud as it was during that Michigan State game. So there's just a new energy. Fans are wanting to come more. We're um, back in the top 25, like I said. So there's just a new type of energy, which is great, and I think the players feed off of it as well. I think this team has really exceeded all expectations, um, and honestly, I didn't really envision much coming into the season. Uh, but they really surprised everyone here. I mean, they're still undefeated in the Big Ten. They're really going on a great run. Um, and I think it's really brought a lot of energy back to the Shot and Scene Center. So it's really great to be around the atmosphere for all the games. The Buckeyes took on Penn State Thursday night in a Big Ten clash. Penn State started out hot, raining threes and building a big lead over the Buckeyes. The Buckeyes were able to battle back and even the score thanks to efforts from Kata Bates Diop and Jay Sean Tate. After Kata Bates Diop hit a late three with five seconds left, Penn State answered with a miraculous buzzer beater from Tony Carr. Despite the loss, Buckeye fans remain optimistic for the remainder of the season. I think, I mean, definitely with, we've shown we can hang with some of the bigger teams. Um, I'd say definitely in the March Madness tournament. Um, hopefully, you know, maybe Sweet 16, Elite 8, I think anything past that would definitely be gravy. But, I mean, compared to where, again, most people expect us to be, I think even making the tournament really is exceeding expectations. Um, let ESPN had us at a number two seed, so, I mean, take it what you will. I do see us at least getting to the Sweet 16, maybe Elite Eight, but um, obviously everyone wants us to be a champion at the end of the day. For Buckeye TV, I'm Brad Murray. Ohio State basketball has seen legends like Jerry Lucas, Katie Smith, and John Havlicek, but did you know a current Buckeye recently set the career Big Ten scoring record? Colin Hass Hill has more. What record hasn't Kelsey Mitchell broken? The senior Ohio State guard has all kinds of school records, and now she broke another. Today, she became the Big Ten points leader. Entering Saturday afternoon's game against Michigan State, Ohio State's Kelsey Mitchell needed 17 points to pass former Minnesota guard Rachel Bantam's record for the most career points by a man or woman in Big Ten history. And with less than three minutes to go in the game and her team holding a commanding 70-58 lead, she received a pass and launched up a three-pointer to break the record. And in true Kelsey Mitchell fashion, she ran back on defense only to receive the ball again and follow up the record breaker with a second triple just seconds later. Michigan State coach Susie Merchant had only one way to describe Mitchell's fourth quarter threes. I mean, Kelsey Mitchell. <laughs> We've been Kelseyed. <laughs> Mitchell finished the game with 3,098 points, and she already had the most career threes by any Big Ten player. But hopefully we can 
can really continue to you know celebrate these moments and and, and get to the end of the year and I think we'll look back in, in amazement of how much she's been able to accomplish. No Kelsey Mitchell accomplishment is too surprising, not even for her, a two-time Big Ten Player of the Year. So when asked after the game whether she even knew she was close, she of course said no. Actually, honestly, I didn't know. I didn't know nothing about that. Only because I thought Rachel Bam had like a lot of points more than I had. So it never even dawned on me that that's who I was in competition with in regards to points. Since she's a senior, Mitchell's career is coming to a close. That's not necessarily a bad thing for one opposing coach. I don't know. I just told her after the game, I said, I hope I never have to play you ever again as long as I possibly live. For the rest of us, though, that means we will soon no longer be able to watch one of the most productive players dominate college basketball. For Buckeye TV, I'm Colin Hossel. Overwatch has been popular as an eSport since the game came out in 2016. Now, in 2018, a new competitive league has been formed. Sean McCready is here to tell us more. Esports popularity has been on the rise in the past couple of years, with games like League of Legends, Dota 2, and Counter-Strike Global Offensive being among the most popular. Overwatch, which is a competitive first-person shooter, has been the latest game to attract massive attention from esports viewers. LA, please put your hands together and welcome the Dallas Fuel to the stage! The developers of Overwatch wanted their game to stand out among other esports, so they decided to create Overwatch League, which resembles a more traditional professional sports team setup, with teams in cities from around the world. I talked to members of Ohio State's eSports initiative to hear their opinions on the league, and if having teams based in cities would be an effective way to reach a larger audience. There's that sense of pride, and I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I don't watch baseball, but I'm going to root for the Pirates just because I'm from Pittsburgh. You know, there are these people, they're going to hear about their teams being from Dallas, Houston, and they're going to be like, I really don't know what's going on, but I'm going to root for them, and then eventually, you know, they'll see what's going on, they'll learn, and then that breeds into people that would have never been interested in it to really start to see what it might be about. Out, and it all stems from maybe just that initial hometown pride. In the first week of games, Activision claims that more than 10 million unique viewers tuned in over the four-day period via Twitch, MLG, and Chinese streaming partners, as well as 400,000 concurrent on Twitch alone. An esports tournament is set up very differently. It's like they hold it during one weekend, it's only three days long, all the teams are there, and you just watch as much of it as you can because it doesn't happen very often. And that's why I love Overwatch League because there's just so much to watch and so much to enjoy. Will Overwatch League be able to maintain these high number of viewers as the season progresses? Only time will tell. Sean McCready, Buckeye TV. Coming up, we take a look at OSU Voices Abroad as well as the SBX Auction. All that and more after this short break. 